J3D Tech here, and in this review for the Saturn III Ultra, sorry about the long wait, I first want to talk about the M3 Premium, a very transcending printer, and what went wrong, and how I see that might be happening again with this printer. When the M3 Premium hit the market, it really was poised to set a new industry standard for build quality, especially about 620 US. A few features this printer has is the light engine, which is fantastic. It's actually better than the Ultra, which the Ultra is best of the current generation of printers. The next thing it has is this massive vat, which is just fantastic. After using it, it's going to be hard to go to anything else. Mixing resin, it won't splash as your printer is printing. It won't splash. You can fit more than a liter of resin there at a time. Uh, it has this dual Z screw, which is just fantastic. It actually has the same screw on this one and the same rails, which are fantastic. Kind of best in class, and it's nice to see they both share the same features. The next this printer has is this really amazing tower. This tower is chonky, it is heavy, it is thick. I can't really show you on the video, but uh, maybe some, some B-roll in there. But it is a big tower. This tower, by comparison, is like a toy. What the tower is good is it actually keeps the printer from bending. Because as the printer um, pulls from the FEP or pushes into the FEP, the tower can actually bend back and forth. This printer is actually does a pretty good job at not bending, which is a huge improvement over the Saturn II, which would bend as it prints. This printer doesn't bend at all. It is incredibly solid. That also has to do with the uh, the top plate. This top plate on this one is significantly thicker and heavier than this one, although this one is still quite an upgrade from some of the other Elegoo printers. The other part that's quite nice about it is, going back to the screw, is that this screw is actually supported by a nice chunky piece of metal and a ball bearing inside of it. This one is also supported, but with a piece of plastic, and the bearing inside of it is actually loose, so it's not necessarily a full support like this one is. And that does make the printer run a little bit noisier, but it does definitely make sure there's going to be no wobble in the screw, which is going to prevent um, any layer lines. Not really prevent layer lines, because there's a couple ways that can happen, but it's going to mitigate where you can get layer lines based on a screw that could be either bent or a bit wobbly. Looking further into these two printers, look at the top plate. If you ever have an M3 Premium, or you ever get to see one in person, you'll know what I'm talking about. But the way this thing is milled on the top is just amazing. What they've done here is they've actually milled out a space around the VAT and around the tape and the LCD. What this does is make sure that the VAT, LCD, LCD, and tape are perfectly lined up so there's no bulging or pushing on the FEP. This makes it for a very consistent FEP pull and also make sure that as you're printing, you're as close to the LCD as you can, which is, which is going to give you the best resolution. Now you may wonder why in a review about the Saturn III Ultra, I'm going on and on and on about the M3 Premium. Well, that's because despite the fact that this printer is less than a year old, you actually can't buy it anymore. It's been discontinued because nobody bought it. And I think nobody bought it because it was just priced a little bit too expensive and I don't think a lot of people really knew what it was. And what makes this printer great a lot of those features are to be found in this printer. So with that, I'm going to focus on talking about why this printer is good and possibly why you should consider it. I'm not even going to get into the ACF film this thing ships with. I did a few prints on it and I got some comparisons and I'll show those comparisons. But for the most part, Falhammer did a very, very good review. Sorry if I said that wrong. Um, and I'm just going to link his review about these films because I share his opinion perfectly. One thing I will say about it real quick is if you really want to make use of this 12K LCD this thing comes with, replace that ACF film with NFEP the second you get it. If you really want to test it, buy a second VAT and then keep the film on the one, put NFEP on the other so you can do your side-by-side -side comparisons, but for the most part, you're going to end up with the um, NFEP in the end. So what makes this printer better than the current competition? Better than the Saturn III, the Saturn II, or even some of the other Anycubic printers that are out right now. Well, one big thing is actually the fact that they moved to the four bolt system. I know there's some data about this one. Some people really like the uh, ball joint. I don't. And um, the fact that on their premium line, they've gone to the four bolt, I think kind of proves that point as well. The ball joints are harder to level. They move out of level a little bit faster. And I have tested this on a micro scale. They do actually rotate a little bit during the print, especially if you have uh, more prints on one side or the other. This can cause some layer lines. Now, the one thing about this particular design in the four posts that is a little bit less than perfect is how low it is. What I found in this particular printer, it is incredibly difficult to level it. And going into the forms, um, I found a lot of people having the exact same issue. Some people said this printer is just absolute garbage. They couldn't get it to work until I showed them um, the workaround I had for it, at which point it pretty much started printing beautiful for everybody. So I've got a calibration part, which is my build plate calibration, 
which will allow you to test your level and set the Z offset. If you do that on this printer, it's gonna print beautifully. But I think due to the way the light engine works on this one, if you don't do that, you're gonna struggle a little bit. You're gonna have a lot of filled prints that either don't even start or they fall off the build plate. A common theme we're seeing with a lot of these printers is the included filter, which I've tested these things on and off, running, not running. To be honest, I haven't seen a difference whether there's two, three, or four of them. Um, but if it's an idea you like, this printer does come with one of them and the ability to put in two. If you've used a lot of printers before, using this one's not gonna feel really any different. Uh, most everything is pretty much standard at this point for 3D printers or resin printers, especially within this price range, but there's some buts. And this is one thing I don't like. Um, I wish manufacturers would do a better job to eliminate buts, even some more interaction with the community, because there's a few things with this printer that could have been completely avoided, and I wouldn't have to give you, it's a great printer, but, and it is a great printer, but there's a few things. Uh, the first thing is, this thing is really short, and I've dropped it a few times, and I almost dropped it just then taking it off. Um, it is barely long enough to clear this so that it's tight. And if you get it off to get tight enough, it wants to fall off again. Um, the next thing is the UI. The UI on this is not great. It's better than their previous, yes, but it's barely better in my opinion. The biggest issue is how many clicks it takes for me to get to adjust the Z height after a print's done. And the fact that the Z equals zero or the reset your zero of your printer is right there. And I almost hit it all the time, which would create a lot of work for me. I haven't yet and I hope I never do, but I might and that will suck. The next thing about it is I do like a printer that lifts it up all the way when it's done. This one doesn't. It'll maybe lift it up a tiny bit, but it leaves it kind of where it was. The reason why I like it to go up all the way is that when I remove the build plate, I want to drain it out a little bit first because I don't want resin all over the place or all over my printer. Um, and so generally what I do when I take it off is I'll kind of pull it off and do it at an angle. And this allows the resin to drip inside the vat and not all down the front of the printer. The other big gotcha about this printer is the speed limit. There's actually a lower and an upper speed limit. Because of this, some individuals think the TSMC just doesn't work. It does work, just not in the way you think it's going to work because, well, that minimum speed limit. So for me, I like to print at 45 millimeters a minute going up for a little bit, and then I'll speed up. But anything lower than 120 millimeters a minute won't be accepted. On the top end, it's actually really fast at 500 millimeters a minute. Uh, most printers are going to do like 250, 300. This guy's cruising at 500. So if you want to print fast, yeah, this is the printer for you. It's it's kind of built for it with a you know thicker, bigger uh, top plate, thicker, bigger um, tower, the rails, everything like that. I'd say this printer definitely is poised for being a fast printer. But if you replace that ACS with NFAP and you slow it down where it can um, and calibrate it in, I've gotten this printer to print as good and as accurate as the Mini 8KS, which is a very accurate printer. And this one keeps up right with it. So it can do both. And at that point, I guess it's very versatile. But if they can replace that uh, firmware with maybe some updates and get rid of those speed limits, move some of the options around so they're a little easier, you know, give us some data we need, um, then at that point, this printer is gonna be mostly free of any butts. It's gonna be a very good printer. Uh, you know, maybe ship with a long screw and then it's pretty much free of any butts. It's just a really good printer at that point. And I have tested that speed limit on the .goo file format, which is new for this printer, and the .ctb file format. It's the same across the board. However, I did notice that even though the speed limits are technically the same, meaning if I drop it or raise it any more or less, I see no increase or decrease in speed, the .ctb format is about 2% faster than the .goo format. I don't know why that is. Um, more investigation will probably find out, but yeah, it just changing the format actually changes how fast this printer goes by a very small percentage. The absolutely beautiful model I used for this review is Hawk Girl by Wicked. I absolutely recommend you check them out. Uh, I do want to point out that the I.O. on this is in a very good position. I love it when they put the uh, USB towards the front, easy to get to. Um, the power button and the power and all that stuff is right there. I do wish the antenna was on the back instead of the front. That would be easier to flip the power switch on and off. I keep my printers kind of somewhat close and I also keep them off when I'm not using them. But overall, really good placement. To really understand this printer, I ran quite a few calibration tests. I did them using the ACF film it ships with and with the NFET. And I also ran uh, quite a number of other calibration tests. 
I really just kind of wanted to get to know this printer. Um, I ran some of these little balls that are about 1.5 millimeter between the inner shell and the outer shell. Um, I did some anti-aliasing tests as well, which is just a modification from Denny's Wang's uh, test. These fun little cubes, which are just really high detail. Of course, my boxes of calibration. And But the most important test for this printer is these little flat plates. And I'll have a link in the description on how to use these, but basically there's five on the build plate. You measure them and making sure that they are your build plate is level and your Z offset is set correctly is very important for this printer. Uh, doing this turns this printer from something that's rather hard to use to something that's quite fun and enjoyable to use. All of the prints you see in this video were done using Lychee Slicer, except for when I did the speed limit tests, I used Chichi Box and Lychee Slicer for consistency. Out of the time of making this video, Lychee Slicer does not yet support sending files remotely over the Wi-Fi. However, that option will be coming very soon. So I'd like to ask you a question. What is more important to you, features or build quality? Consider what happened to the M3 Premium and what might happen if the Saturn III Ultra shares the same fate. I want you to think about that when you interact with a business as large or before you make your next purchase. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day. Um, this was a print that I did from Wicked. This is a uh, Hawk Girl. Hawk Girl? She's hot too.